kakai poichi wa ringo dawe kote cha Smart Oh 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 Thank you very much A lot has been spoken about knowing knowing how I live good on Mora Sever Kagwara. I am aware that I think.
many other areas with requests and even other areas with the demands and challenges similar to the ones of Serere. And then we were in Serere again two weeks ago, and then again we were in the other hill with Okupa a long time, some three, four, one month ago. That hill is called what? The stream of water. But I told the people in the office that uh, let's go back to Serere and, and talk to the people of Serere. <laughs> And they accepted, and that's why we are here, all of us, and we are very happy to be here today with you. And the letter which you sent to office, reached the office, the Honorable Chela, you are the one who signed the letter, inviting me to come and launch the X-ray machine commission. But I want to thank Honorable Adoa, Honorable Kabe, Honorable Fred Opolot, because all of them endorsed that letter. And we we're all in consultation on how to handle today. And we all agreed that if we postponed it, Christmas is coming. And then when Christmas comes, New Year will come. And then when New Year comes, when the, 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 the people start other activities, now the activities will be so many. So we all agreed that we handle this activity today and we don't postpone it. I want to thank God for enabling us to handle it the way we decided. But as you may wish to note, therefore, the purpose of our being here is on the issue of health. The government of Uganda prefers and promotes disease prevention and health promotion as a first priority in matters of health. Uh, and that's why the health, this, uh, the health officer of the Health Center 4 and also the district health officer, together with all the leaders at all, all levels, know by policy that the communities are supposed to drink boiled water, safe water. If it is not from the borehole, at least boil it if you are not sure about it. You're supposed to sleep under the mosquito net, clean the compound so that mosquitoes are very far from the home, eat hot food so that you don't get problems with the stomach, Immunize communities against all those diseases which are called communicable diseases or incommunicable diseases and so on and so forth. That's disease prevention. So I have come here again to reinforce the voice of government that we all in Serere must spearhead that very strong and good component of Minister of Health of Disease Prevention. Washing hands, using soap, because when we do that, we reduce the number of people who go to the health facilities. And therefore, the few who go, go to the health facilities and they are attended to adequately and sufficiently. Secondly, government also does disease uh, health promotion, health promotion. Health promotion helps us to avoid diseases like within the districts or within the regions, but also medical tourism outside the country. So I would like to share with you that the government is making all the effort on how to, 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 to percolate issues to the grassroots. You call them, you meet them, you meet LC3 chairman, and in case you even need some facilitation for those meetings, feel free to ring me, I will always be 
handy to give that support. Because I know when you discuss, you resolve matters. And the best way to resolve matters is discussion and dialogue. So I'm happy that you were in my district the other day to discuss and you have brought some issues here which I'm going to respond to at an appropriate time. Because of age is a crime. And keeping a child of school going age at home when his friends or her friends are at school is also a crime. So we don't want to avoid, we, we don't want to have conflict. Let's agree in unison that let these children go to school. They will finish school and come and serve the community in different capacities, which we shall all appreciate. Serena Research Station, I want to thank the minister here. Serena Research Station and other research stations which had shifted either to animal husbandry alone or crop, crop half husbandry alone are now going to start doing two, both. We have taken a decision in cabinet that all those agricultural research stations must handle both crop husbandry and animal husbandry, including Serere Research Station. Them, even when they were in government with the President Obote, they were disturbing them. And now, there is a major disarmament which took place, and peace returned inside Karamoja. So I'm thinking about cathedrals. But in other words, it is an isolated case, which is going to be resolved. On the looming hang, I want to return back to you, the LC5 chairman of TESO. What is the plan? In the first season, there was a very poor harvest. In the second season, again, there is a poor harvest. Give us the plan and we implement a sustainable plan. I have returned that to you deliberately. Honorable Chola, the chairperson of all LC5, chairman in TESO. You can get me that plan in the next three days or even four or five days. I'll be very happy to receive it and see how to implement it. Balalo, when I grew up, I want to share with you, I don't know whether there are some elders here. When I grew up, I, I used to see Balalo in Komolo. You know Komolo? There were some Balalo in Komolo there. And even people in Katakui used to go and buy milk from them. And, and ghee, ghee. My mother had friends in those Balalos there who were in Komolo. But also I think in Agu here. Agu. I, I want to ask you, that time when those Balalo were there, and even Agu. How were they coexisting with the people at that time? Because there were no outrageous statements being made by leaders. How were they coexisting? And what is it that is making us not be able to coexist with them now? I want to challenge you, the LC5 chairman, again. I have my people here in Serere. They came from Katakui a long time ago. And you are very happy with them and you are coexisting with them. Now, this Palalo you are talking about, whenever I go there, when they bring me a case that the cattle have eaten sorghum, millet, but in a very uh, rare circumstances, I normally call the two people, the one of the owner of the cows and then the person, the owner of the crops. And then I, I start engaging them. And then, in more often than not, they will even tell you that the matter was resolved. So I want us to look deeply and objectively into that matter, other than making it a matter of the microphone. Because we might be missing a point. I want us to pick that point. How were our elders managing to coexist with those balalo? In Komolo, when I was a child, I ate their ghee. My mother used to bring ghee from them, ghee. Because my mother would say, we also have our ghee, but they are ghee softer than ours. We used to hear, but I thought it was also my first home.
But since he has chosen that it's my second home, Katakui is the first, I think, and then here is the second. Thank you very much. I will always come to Serere when you invite me, and I would like to, conti to, to, conti to, to remind you to continue being united the way you are. When you are having a meeting on development, there are no colors. Because when people want to drink water, it is the same water which is drunk by all colors. Whether red, whether green, whether yellow, it is, if it's drinking water, it's drinking water. So whenever there is a meeting of development, please endeavor to attend in person. Don't think about those political colors. And lastly, our people again who came from Katapu to Serere, they told me that you are very hospitable. And they told me to thank you. <laughs> well, I learned about the Bansen in Kidetok. So I am very happy to have been invited to this ceremony. And I want to wish all of us good luck as we return to our homes. And also wish the hospital growth and strength and be part of the hospital, of, of that Serere hospital. I will be part of it now with your leaders. Every time they talk about it, I will be part of it. Every time they talk about it, I will be part of it. So on matters of politics, Honorable Chola, we will come and talk about those. I have said all this for God and my country. Members that were receiving accolades. Finally, finally, the launch of the groups. We have three groups. The Youth Farmers Group, Association 30 members, the Rere Joint Farmers Association, especially when not properly managed. So those are the three groups. Going to be launched by HE, the Vice President, they are busy receiving Young farmers, three million. Young farmers, three million. so that they can come and be relevant in the world of work. I would like to make a clarification finally on the issue of security which the chairman LOC5 talked about. We very well know that uh, the, the issue of cattle rustling is an issue that the, the government of Uganda has been grappling with. I think since independence, my, my late uncle, John Robert Elamot, who we buried the other day, used to tell me that those Karamojongs used to disturb them even when they were in government with the president of body, they were disturbing them. And now, there is a major disarmament which took place, and peace returned inside Karamoja. But also, in the neighborhood, 
but there are waves which keep coming. And what the Honorable Ochola was talking about is a wave which came up from nowhere. And we have had already meetings with the security chiefs about it. Deployments inside Karamoja have already been uh, reinforced. And deployments neighboring Karamoja have also been reinforced. It is not that there were no deployments, but they, were, they have just been reinforced, added. More, more forces have been added. So that's an isolated case which is going to be tackled in a very short time. It's going to be sorted. I want to comfort you about that. Government is aware about it and is being handled. But we want to handle it comprehensively by empowering the people of Karamoja with their livelihoods. That's why the issue of constructing valley dams is still ongoing in Karamoja. We have special programs in Karamoja, including feeding children of Karamoja in schools. And now the parish development model, which is going to be across the country, is also going to empower the people of Karamoja. So in meetings which we have with our uncles, let's deal with psychological disarmament. Let them completely disassociate their minds from thinking that a gun has value. Because government is trying to give them alternatives on livelihood. For us, they are our uncles and aunties. Let's continue speaking to them in whichever avenue, avenues that we have so that psychologically we can disassociate themselves from thinking about cathodarsis. But in other words, it is an isolated case which is going to be resolved. On the looming hang, I want to return back to you, the LC5 chairman of TESO. What is the plan? In the first season, there was a very poor harvest. In the second season again, there is a poor harvest. Give us the plan and we implement a sustainable plan. I have returned that to you deliberately. Honorable Chola, the chairperson of all LC5 chairmen in TESO. You can get me that plan in the next three days or even four or five days. I'll be very happy to receive it and see how to implement it. Balalo, when I grew up, I want to share with you, I don't know whether there are some elders here. When I grew up, I, I used to see Balalo in Komolo. You know Komolo? There were some Balalo in Komolo there. And even people in Katakui used to go and buy milk from them. And, and ghee, ghee. My mother had friends in those Balalos there, who were in Komolo. But also I think in Agu here, Agu. I want to ask you, that time when those Balalo were there, and even Agu, how were they coexisting with the people at that time? Because there were no outrageous statements being made by leaders. How were they coexisting? And what is it that is making us not be able to coexist with them now? I want to challenge you, the LC5 chairman, again. I have my people here in Serere. They came from Katakui a long time ago, and you are very happy with them, and you are coexisting with them. Now, this balalo you are talking about, whenever I go there, when they bring me a case that the cattle have eaten sorghum, millet, but in a very uh, rare circumstances, I normally call the two people, the one of the owner of the cows, and then the person, the owner of the crops. And then I, I start engaging them. And then, in more often than not, they will even tell you that the matter was resolved. So I want us to look deeply and objectively into that matter, other than making it a matter of the microphone. Because we might be missing a point. I want us to pick that point. How were our elders managing to coexist with those balalwe? In Komolo, when I was a child, I ate their ghee. My mother used to bring ghee from them, ghee. 
Because my mother would say, we also have our gi. But their gi is softer than ours. We used to hear her talk as we were children, that their gi is softer. Uh, and you know, Honorable Chola, in Katakui, we used to host Karamojong some time back, whenever there would be a dry season. They would come with their cows, their women, their children, for grass and water. Every dry season. Then when it starts raining, they would go back. Now, how were we managing to coexist with those Karamojongs? Moreover, sometimes, they would even steal again when they are going. <laughs> so I think in my view, it is between us and them. And since we're all human, I think it's a matter which can be sorted. Because after all, there are laws. If it is about destruction of environment, let's call the people and say, this is a law. How are we going to sort it? If it is about other crops of other human beings, we can say culturally, for us here, we eat millet, soccer, mm. we eat cassava, and, and for you, maybe you don't eat that, you only eat milk. Yes. Mm. But how do we do it together? For us who eat, mi who, who eat other crops, and for you who are on milk. I think it's a matter that can be sorted here, now, within the region. So I want also you to take it up. Start having meet, simple meetings. Those are very friendly people. They, they don't reject meetings when you call them. If there is an, a law which is breached, you raise it. So that people live in harmony. The world is now a global, a global village. It's a very small global village. So on that one, that's my presentation and that's my request. I want also to thank the the health workers, especially on helping government and the communities against COVID-19. I want to thank you very sincerely from the bottom of my heart, you the health workers. You are the front line. You never deviated from your, your ethical work on a new virus like that, which no one knew its characteristics. And some of you lost your lives in that fight. We continue praying for them and also granting that God sustains the bereaved. Finally, the issue of LC1 bicycles for the whole country. And everywhere I've attended a meeting, at least since I became a vice president, they, that is always the first point. Bicycles. Bicycles are being arranged for LC1 chairman across the country. The issue of motorcycles, we also agreed, as my sister, the Honorable Adora has said, that the LC3 chairman deserve a, mod, a modest means of transport, and that is a motorcycle, so that they can monitor government programs and also manage to carry on their duties. Patience pains, but patience pays. Even if patience pains, I request you to be patient, because it will pay at one time. It is not that we are not uh, sensitive about it, but it's just that we have been tackling other urgent challenges, which you, you and I know. Now that we are going to open the economy, we are also going to make sure that we somersault into touching all those areas which have come to a, a halt because of uh, COVID-19. Surgical word, I have already said, I want that in context of bills of quantities so that I can present it and return the message. But I want to thank you for the effort, thank the engineer and also the, the hospital. The hospital has even fenced it, it is protected and cared for. So anyone who would want to make, put his resources there would be encouraged because of even the state in which the building is. 
I thank you for that initiative. The child who is having a heart problem, I may have copies of their uh, medical forms, and then I'll take it up either with His Excellency the President or also with my office, depending on how much it will cost. And I will be very closely connected to members of parliament and, and the minister here. I want to thank you once again for inviting me to Serena District. My uh, Honorable Chola has called it my second home. I have accepted. But I thought it was also my first home. But since he has chosen that it's my second home, Katakui is the first, I think, and then here is the second. Thank you very much. I will always come to Serena when you invite me, and I would like to, conti to, to, conti to, to remind you to continue being united the way you are. When you are having a meeting on development, there are no colors. Because when people want to drink water, it is the same water which is drunk by all colors, whether red, whether green, whether yellow. It is, if it's drinking water, it's drinking water. So whenever there is a meeting of development, please endeavor to attend in person. Don't think about those political colors. And lastly, our people again who came from Katakui to Serere, they told me that you are very hospitable. And they told me to thank you. <laughs> and they always tell us that they are now from Serere. And we have also said it's okay. Now we shall come to Serere for visits. And then we come there and take advantage to eat fish. Pingire, is Pingire the one which has kiddeto? Oh, Kasilo. Pingire. Did, did you know that uh, in 1988 I was in Pingire there in kiddeto in S1? And then when the rebels became rough, my father came and removed me and took me to another school in Karamoja called Kamule says. Wow. <laughs> but that one year I spent in, in Kidetoka, I ate fish. That's where I learned how to eat fish. In our place there, we don't have fish. But when I was brought here in S1, so I am very. This are going to be taken to the other campus and the other campus. Today has been another day altogether in, in Serere district, to be very sincere. And this building that we are just standing under houses, a donation that you have offered. Now, as a Muria TV, we would want to define it as a blessing to Serere. What is the thing that drove you, honestly, to give such a huge offer to these people of Serere? I, it is really to share with the people who are less fortunate than many because Serere uh, hasn't had this type of machine. The nearest is Soroti Hospital and Ngora Hospital and probably Kumi. And on the other side, we have a boundary of a lake, and yet there are human beings in this area. So we wanted our people to have better care and better diagnosis, and also to motivate the doctors who are in here to stay when they are able to make a diagnosis of what they read in their books when they translate to the real life, uh, examine patients and give appropriate treatment and see people get better. That is one reason we gave the, the machine. But of course the other one was to motivate people to come together in such projects. I feel, my heart feels okay when I see people come together to develop their own area because I know this can be replicated in many sectors of our society, in many sectors of our life. We can banish poverty ultimately. We can live better lives ultimately. And so this is just one bit of that sector that we think could probably spur some kind of thinking on how we can come together to do such projects together. Yeah, thank you very much. Now today, this project you offer has been graced by the presence of all people, the Vice President of the Republic of Uganda. How does that make you feel? I feel very happy. I feel very happy and honored that the government and the vice president uh, herself came here because this shows that there is 
a, a partnership between the private sector and government, and that's how we want to work to improve on the lives of our people. It's all about service, we're all serving, and so when she comes here, she brings in that energy that we need to, to infuse into our people to work together for development and not just to keep waiting in one way or the other. I'm, I'm blessed. I feel happy. I feel honored that they honored our invitation. For and, and lastly, about two things. One, what would be your message to the people who are going to be using this machine? The message is take it, use it very well so that it lasts a very long, long time. And uh, when you use it well, certainly its lifespan will be better and many people will be served. And it's certainly, every, like any machine, it needs to be serviced, it needs to be taken care of well, and uh, the, the, the people who use it will certainly get benefits of having the best of service in the healthcare system. So I want to plead with them to use it like it were their own. I know that in many of our government facilities, taken care of so if they could guard it jealously because we have sacrificed for it would like them to sacrifice and let this machine have meaning real meaning in the lives of the people of Serere and beyond yeah lastly I know this is a question you always don't like answering but I, I want to ask you like how much money has this machine really taken and then uh, uh, what would be your message to other people who might have an advantage to some of these resources to their society. Yes, I don't know why the journalists like this question of how much money, how much money. But well, the machine itself, if you go to any market, this ranges from 200 million to 500 million. But that's not the issue. You don't have to have a lot of money to give. You can even give something little, something that helps another human being. It's not about the money. It's about what, what you've given will do to others, how it will impact other people. So many other people, the sons of Teso, the Ugandans, we can turn our country around, we can do it together, we can change, and this kind of project can be replicated in all sectors of our society, in all villages of our society, of Uganda. And I think, uh, think again, life has meaning when you make another person.